welcome to this week's EdTech Tuesday video. This week we're going to talk about the research pane in Google Docs. This helps you and your students provide in-document citation more easily, and it also integrates Google Search with Google Docs in a really convenient way. To use this tool, you need to have a Google document open. I've created a blank one, but you could have your students write something and then um, start to use the research pane as they're adding evidence to support their argument. So I've created a generic Google document called the French Revolution, and in order to get into the research pane, I need to click on the Tools menu. When I click there, you'll see that there is a selection called Research, and you click on that one, and it will open this extra window, this pane on the right side of the page. When you open it, um, this top section will probably be closed, but you can open it again with this little down arrow. And what that does is it just lets you specify what kind of information you want to get. If you want to get uncopyrighted information or if any kind of information will work for you. And it will also cite for you, so you can choose your preferred citation method, MLA, APA, or Chicago. To start searching for information to enter into your document, you click in this search box at the top and you'll see that it lets you narrow your choices, everything, images, scholar, quotes, dictionary, and tables. And we'll go through each one of those individually so you can see what the different options are. So I'm gonna, just going to start typing the title of my document, The French Revolution, and just see what information I find. Um, often with students we have to talk about keyword searches what are the best keywords to choose, and this probably isn't the best search, but it will work for the purposes of this video. So what you'll see here is because I'm searching with a regular Google search, um, I have lots of choices that come up, and one of them was uh, the Brit Encyclopedia Britannica. So when I click on it, it opens a new tab, and I get this information from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now I can cut and paste from this website, which is what I'm going to do here. And then when I drop it into my document over here, now I can cite it. So I go back to it on the right side, and you'll see when I hover over it, these three options appear, Preview, Insert Link, and Cite. So if I click on Cite, and I've chosen MLA format, it's going to automatically cite this source for me. So it's going to add a little footnote to the end of that, and then at the bottom of the page, it's going to have an MLA citation for that information that I just um, took off the web. So that is a really helpful thing for our kids to see, that they can cite their sources as they're writing their paper. There's only one problem with this, and that is that MLA format doesn't actually use footnotes. It uses in-text citations with the author's last name and the page number. So we'd have to teach our students in order to, for them to follow MLA format, they would have to add that. But at least it gives them um, the information that they could copy and paste into a works cited page later. So let's look at some of these other options. With the same search terms, um, I clicked on images, and you'll see that I can see these images. If I click on it, it's going to take me to the website that has um, that picture in it. But better for my students would be to just take the picture, drag it, and drop it into the document. And when I do that, it's actually going to cite it at the bottom of the page. Like, I don't have it to show you here. But it, later in the video, you'll see that it shows up at the bottom of the page, even after I delete the picture from my document. Another option is to search for Google Scholar, and these are more scholarly articles. Um, the only problem with these is that you get a better shot when you actually look at Google Scholar. So these, use, these searches are, aren't as useful with the Google Research pane. You're better off clicking on it and going over to Google Scholar and getting it from there. A fourth option is to do quotes. And you'll see that there are quotes listed here about the French Revolution. Um, students can just insert it, and it automatically gets cited at the bottom of the page. I accidentally inserted it in the middle of a sentence, but your students would do a better job than that. And you'll see while we're looking here at the bottom, that second footnote is the one that was the for the uh, picture that I've already deleted from the document. So you'll see that reference down there at the bottom. So it does cite a picture when you drop it in there. The next one is dictionary, and um, that one doesn't work for this search, but for others it would. And then the last is tables. And so you'll see that there are all these tables that 
Google found online about the French Revolution, and these are interesting. You can't embed them into your Google document, but you can preview them by clicking on the table, and it will slide out here to the left. So students can use this as a reference for general information or to keep track of information in a particular topic that they're studying. These arrows here at the top next to the search box will take you back through the different searches that you've done. So if you had a more fruitful search earlier, you don't have to retype it. You can just slip back through your search history. So those are all the features of the Google Research Pane. You can see how this would be helpful for students and yourself as you are conducting research in Google Docs. Thanks for watching this week's EdTech Tuesday video.